Hey, it's Ted from Mobworld. Mm. Gogurt. Mm. Yeah. You know what my favorite part about Gogurt is? That it's not like real yogurt. So I don't have to think that it's really fatty. Um, and the second thing I like about Gogurt is the jokes on it. What do you call a pirate chest filled with fruit? Buried treasure. You know, it's really kind of weird. It's talking about fruit, and then it's talking about berries, which are two separate things. So I'm kind of like, that's not very funny. And then I'm reminded that um, some berries are actually fruit, and some fruit are actually berries. Like, bananas are actually berries from an uh, agricultural perspective. And then you have strawberries and raspberries that are actually fruit. And it's confusing. And then I don't know what's funny anymore. Because maybe the joke is was really tapping into a controversy. And maybe it's satire. Maybe it's trying to point out the, um, the, the, the complexity and the, the deception that's inherent in the English language. It's fucking with me, man. It's really fucking with me. I don't know what's going on. But I got Skaven for Shadespire. Um, I don't know that there's many controversies there. So that's a safe zone for us. We can be comforted knowing that Skaven are Skaven regardless. And we're not going to like get a Skaven group and then all of a sudden it's elves. We know this to be a fact. I mean, I think. Um, so anyway, let's take a look inside this thing. And maybe we'll put one together. And maybe we'll paint it. This is good, right? Whew, comfort. Spike claws swarm. <laughs> oh, please don't be high elves. Please don't be high elves. Please don't be high elves. Oops, I ripped the box. I'll never be able to sell it on the collector's market in 20 years. Oh, balls. Mmm, brown chocolatey plastic. Ooh, numerillas. Mmm, oh, cool. This is dope. There's like a nice sewer kind of feel to it. Oh man, I like that. Oh wow. Oh, check that out. There's there's little rats running underneath the sewer. Dude, that is so cool. I mean, sure, there's rats in the, uh, whatever that is, the little gutter, but fuck, that is so cool. Wow, that is rad. All right, let's actually look at the Skaven. Okay, so there's a uh, half and half of this um, what was that, a, um, a grate of some sort? Uh, I don't know, maybe that's supposed to be another little manhole thing. Um, yeah, we've got a little, little shiv. That's cool. We've got little scavens. I don't, there's a spear. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I, I like the scavens. Um, what do we have here? Oh, cool, we got the Wolverine Claws. That's dope. Uh, and then, yeah, I wonder if this guy's like a Storm Vermin. I wonder if that's the way he's supposed to be. It might be tied to him, so that might be the armor. Yep, no, yes, maybe. Yeah, that looks like it's probably him. Ah, Prancel Tail. Haha. <laughs> Rad. Let's see, they look at the bases. These bases look kind of generic. Uh, they're not quite as fancy. But... Those are cool. I, I like them. They got a lot of detail in between them. You, can, you know, just like all the rocks kind of fiddling throughout. You know, it's not like a nice level um, paver pad. Like it, it's been upheaved and disheveled. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'm excited to put these guys together. Uh, I know some of the models have been really good about the um, uh, fitting their seams uh, nicely to where you don't notice them, but I think the skeletons were one. Uh, I didn't show you that video, I never finished that video, but the skeletons were a little tough. I think they had some spots where they need some, actually a few of the others too, the, the Chaos and the Stormcasted too, but that where you had to fill in green stuff, so. Um, all right, they got two decks, cool. Um, Spike Claw Swarm, deck one of two. All right, I'm not gonna look at that. Let's go ahead and put some together and take a look. These turned out really good. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I think a lot of the seams uh, hid really well. I mean, there's like obvious seams, you know, like right along here, back of there, back oh, along the thigh. Um, 
but you know it's like it's natural you know like that's obviously like a piece of you know his armor you know there's some fur sticking out of his junk um you know here's another good one you know the seams are rack right back here you know where everything would tuck right in uh you know it's, it seems like it's all along clothes lines there's a little bit of a gap right there um I might just put a little bit of glue and then scrape it. They're like re-sculpt that. So I'll put him off into the fixed side. Um, let's see. Yeah, here's another one where it's like along the lines of the the cloth. Uh, and then back here. Oh, uh, this was really cool. Um, hopefully you can see that. But uh, yeah, like they they had it go along the back, whereas like two pieces of fabric and stitched together. So that was rad. Like the stitches actually kind of go across and. It's just these little fiddly details. Um, let's see. There's uh, another gutter runner. Yeah, once again, here is the, the stitches kind of make it up, make up the seam. Um, yeah, dude. These are cool. I, I'm, I think they're having a lot of fun with this, like these puzzle pieces. Um, he had a funny one. Oh, I think it was like right here with the cape. Like that's... Uh, that's something I'm not super excited about. Um, it's it's probably, I don't know if it's like green stuff worthy. And then of course you have like this right here. So I might just throw a little bit of glue in there and then scratch it into place. I might nick it a little bit just to, so it's not like a flat surface, but um, yeah, I dig this. Dig him flying across into the peeps. So um, let's go ahead and uh, take a minute. Um, I'll prime these guys up and we'll start painting them. Okay, so start with the Ferrari Red. And we're going to hit that cape real quick. Alright, there we go. Okay, just get a little under here. Okay. All right, then go wash out this. All right, now we got a little bit of light red. Let's get the water out of there. Okay, we're mostly gonna focus on the edges. Um, let's see. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this real quick. Um, Cause I think it needs, this is kind of like an off white. Um, but I feel like it needs just a little bit more, uh, just, I just want to wash it out a little bit, hopefully, because this is, this light red is a little orangish, um, hopefully it won't become too pink. Okay, so first off, we're going to dry this off real quick, just pumping a little bit of air through there. There it goes. That's pretty quick. Okay. Back a little more light over here. That's not too bad. Not too bad. There we go. Edge of this cloak a little bit. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna add just a little bit more white. Okay, here we go. It's coming out a little, little yellow. Ah. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we're good. All right, now that we let this guy sit for a second, um, I'm gonna throw a little bit of tape on him because uh, we're gonna hit that um, that that jibba 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 <laughs> the the grate. So uh, yeah, and this we're not gonna leave it on for very long. You start leaving this blue tape on. And it ends up, uh, and, oh, well, I'll just use my thumb to cover that. Okay. 
There we go. Yeah, so you leave this blue tape too on, uh, on too long, and it starts to pull off paint. Um, and by too long, I mean it's you know many hours. <laughs> Not um, so. Let's go ahead and hit up some of this. Um, God, what is this? The dark gray blue. Uh, okay. We're doing the stonework on this guy. Okay. Yeah, it's got a, a decent base coat to it. Um, so we're going to wash this out just a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and add a little bit of uh, pale blue. And we're going to be adding some brown to this later on. So it's not going to be, um, it's just not going to come out really blue. So you don't have to worry about it. Do a little backwash. And uh, I'm going to adjust the lights real quick. All right, so get a little bit of that paint out. Okay, here we go. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get the, the pale color like right in the middle of the brick. Uh, come on, you. Okay, oops. Yeah, it's just blowing out sometimes. You kind of got to be on top of these things. Precision instruments. Alright, we're just about there. Okay, get a little bit more of that pale blue. I think that you uh, white I put in the gun really messed with it. I'm going to go back over the, some of these. Just kind of brighten this up a little bit. There we go. Um, honestly, I want it just to be a little bit brighter. Now I complained a second ago about this white but I'm gonna use a little bit more anyway kind of pushing the push the envelope here kids uh, grab a brush I'm just gonna okay okay there we go. We're done. Model complete. Let's get into the base a little bit. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what we can come up with uh, for, oh, excuse me, um, for that water. I'm kind of thinking that it should be brown water. Um, so we'll get into, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of that burnt umber that we like so much. I'm gonna show you the, Showing you this pot, like, <laughs> we'll to tell what it is. I don't even know if the color is on there anymore. Eh, whatever. <laughs> this thing is wicked old. It's, I mean, generations have uh, been born into this world, raised children, died, had their children raise children, and so on. Uh, I think I've had it for 15 years. Okay, so <laughs> by children, I mean, like, mayflies. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get a little bit of this burnt umber into the into the water. Um, I think that'll look that'll probably look kind of nice. And what we'll probably end up doing is once we do that, um, maybe what we can do is uh, throw a little bit of like a green um, glaze over it, and you know just to kind of give it an algae-ish kind of feel. Um, a little for texture. I don't know, I wonder, wonder what we could, I wonder if I could just do like a, you know what, let's let's go ahead and mix a little bit of this, of, of that green into it. Um, 
So if you watch my videos, I often go for the Warpstone. I have a very unimaginative palette, to be honest. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll just get it in the, the corners a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's just, just subtle. I wonder... Okay, yeah, well, that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be good. It's not too, uh, too harsh. I think the, the washes will probably tame it down a little bit too. Um, so that's good. And what we might want to do, maybe what we'll, um, in the end, after we clear coat it, uh, maybe we could do some art coat. Um, that might make the water a little bit shiny. So um, let's do a bit of uh, brown. I don't know what color this is. Oh, brown oxide. Um, so it's probably has a little bit extra red to it, I imagine. Doesn't seem like it though. Okay, it's just a little bit lighter. You know, honestly, I don't like this color. I I like the color. It's just that this paint, in particular, doesn't uh, coat very well. Um, I don't really subscribe to the thin coats philosophy. The two thin coats, I like to do it all in one. Um, and you know, I know that it, it's important to do the two thin coats when you're kind of figuring it all out. But once you kind of have your system down and you, you're able to manipulate paint pretty well, then uh, um, I think you can get away from it. I think that, you know, it's good to practice uh, thin coats. And it's just a matter of brush control. Okay, there we go. So it's nice and subtle. I, I think I like that. Um, then for the tail, we're, we're doing real simple with this tan shadow. And uh, while we're at it, we'll just do the uh, the fleshy bits, pick out some ears, your little nose. You don't have to be exact. I think our uh, our wash is going to kind of tame it down a little bit. Um, all right, so that's that. Uh, let's go. Actually, uh, let's give it about two seconds to dry, and then we'll come right back to it. That was a little bit more than two seconds. It was probably like five. Uh, so let's get some Agrax or shade, and we're just going to dump it all over here. This is going to be kind of like a multi-step process so we got that it's gonna hit the cracks of course give it a little bit of depth um, then we're gonna actually I think it looks fine yeah it looks fine the way it is so it's gonna be a one-step process ha 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 but you know what let's take that step a little bit further um, we have the uh, we have the grate that goes around there I'm gonna take this brown again um, and we're gonna hit up all the metal parts along here and so that's uh, all this like I said like I like this color but it just doesn't go on very nicely it, I don't know maybe if, maybe if I mix my paints better it's like a lot of times they end up sitting for ever um, well some of them like this is the one I use a lot I have to say I mean you know, GW has its, has some nice paints. You know, there's a lot of other manufacturers like the Reaper and so on. But like the way I kind of look at a lot of things, like uh, buying tools, um, is that a lot of times like I just buy like the cheap tools, and then if they um, when they break, then I go and buy the nice tools. And that way, and a lot a lot of times like it's the cheap tools like last forever. And I kind of feel the same way about paint. In some ways you know try the cheap ones well it's not always the case I mean I'm not like oops I'm not pretty staunch about that so I do uh, I do buy like the really nice paint every once in a while um, and then you kind of just like get an idea of like 
what you use a lot and um, where things are quality because like I always say like there's a um, every manufacturer has like a really nice paint they have that thing that they do really well um, but it is really cool to see I, I took some classes but when I go to Adepticon I take classes from uh, some world renowned painters and um, <laughs> I always kind of feel like the, the newbie in the corner like I'm out of place like, who are all these, like, amazing, like, world-renowned people taking classes from other world-renowned people and learning their techniques, and here I am with my, like, craft paint and dry-brushing techniques. <laughs> um, but, uh, anyway, it is really cool uh, when I see, you know, a lot of these guys, like, pulling out, like, just strange batches of paint, you know, like, I think when I hang out with the master classes, I just assume that a lot of them are, you know, like they, they have like the finest of the fine, you know, like paintbrushes made out of uh, Russian mink fur uh, and like all this stuff. And I just like, wow, they have to have, they got the inside scoop on everything. And, you know, they probably have like these uber fine everything. And, and then it's, you know, like they'll dump out their bag of paint and it's, you know, bolt gun silver, <laughs> like, uh, or bolt gun metal and uh, goblin green and like all these GW paints as well as like everything else, and uh, so then I feel I feel justified, you know, like, and I also feel like, I mean, I, well, first off, that you know everybody has like that uh, that paint. Every company has that paint that they do well, but also that, um, you know, it's um, the Games Workshop has been really doing a good job of making some, some, finding some really good paint, um, and oftentimes, like, I just kind of figure that that's, like, the generic brand, you know, in some ways, but not the case, not the case, uh, and if you followed that thought train, congratulations, <laughs> like, I think I derailed it quite a bit, so, okay, there we go, uh, give that a moment. Okay, let's go ahead and hit in, hit some of that with, uh, <laughs> hit that again with some Agrax. And, um, you know, I found, I feel in a, that a lot of this, uh, the stonework doesn't quite have the, the punch that I really was looking for. Um, I guess I was hoping that that, um, that the airbrush would get just a little bit more contrast than it did. So um, what we might end up doing is kind of feathering some of the uh, Agrax into, into the stonework um, to kind of get some more contrast. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean here in a second as we do it. Um, I've been testing some of these techniques on um, some of the other uh, Skaven, so <laughs> um, you know, kind of as I go, just to make sure that this all works out. Okay, all right. So now that we got that, um, let's go ahead and get in here with some of this into the cracks. Um, and so what I mean that we're gonna feather some of it is we're gonna run our, run the Agrax over there and then we're just gonna kind of smooth it out just a little bit. And uh, so that'll get it, uh, get a slightly darker color along the edges of the bricks. Um, that's where they would be kind of worn more. Actually, I think they're back to be more worn. I guess it'd be a different kind of wear. But it'll, it'll just give them a little bit more of a, I don't know, a lighter color in the middle. So one of the things that I found with edge highlights is that edge highlights don't often look realistic. Um, if you look at things like the, the corner of your, I think they call it a bullnose of the, um, of a wall. 
is that the edges actually collect more grime and so are typically not lighter. I mean, it depends on what color it is. It depends on what's going on and so on. If you have a black uh, wall, of course, you're going to have a, a lighter um, bullnose simply because grime isn't black. It's kind of it's lighter than that. But um, So that's uh, something to consider is, you know, when we do that, it, you almost kind of look like edge highlights kind of give it uh, almost like a unrealistic Tron kind of feel. Do you remember the movie Tron where everything was kind of, it had like a, a contour line, like this light contour line. Um, so let's just get away from that a little bit. Um, so we're just going to go kind of around the, around the edge of the block. Feather it just a little bit. And I kind of drug some of that paint into that crack right there. And go around the edge. You know, if I were doing an army of Skaven, I definitely would not be doing all this work on the on the uh, rocks. Like, it would just not be worth it. But since there's only, what, five of these guys in the warband? Yeah, <laughs> may as well. You know, they're essentially all going to be show pieces. Um, thankfully, this is the only guy with like a like a diorama type base. Dude, this is looking good. I'm really happy with this. I think this is the right idea. I kind of wonder. I mean, I, I I don't always watch the. Uh, the Warhammer TV videos, but I kind of wonder if this isn't some of the ways that the heavy metal team does their brickwork. And they probably don't do the, the airbrush first. So I kind of cheated, you know, and I gave myself a head start. Okay, get the rest of the ground. I'll have to figure something else out with these dirt piles. I don't want them to look like that. Almost done. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Love it. Glob it in there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the rocks. Okay, so using some of this Niclex Arxa, uh, Oxide, I'm kind of hitting some of the bolts. I, I only just use it for the first time tonight, so I'm not entirely sure how it's supposed to go down. Um, probably should have watched a video or something on it. Um, but, uh, the way I kind of saw it, um, was, it was almost like a, I don't know, I don't think I'm using it right. It probably is supposed to be like on silver or something. I definitely don't like it on these bolts, but I'm going to put something else over this, um, which is what I ended up doing on the other project I was working on. Um, and by other project, I mean this other Skaven. So, um, so I ended up, uh, running like a, uh, a little bit of orangish wash over it to make it look uh, a little different. So I'm going to give that a second and, uh, come right back. So I've been using some of this, uh, light rust from Vallejo on a model wash. Um, it's, I really like it for the rusting. It, it has a nice, like brownish, uh, orange to it. Um, and yeah, I just kind of hit in there a little bit. I usually make like, um, streaks with it, like on my tanks, but it works really nicely for this too. Yeah, there we go. Let's let that sit for a second. Okay. I'm going to try a little bit of the Seraf, uh, Seraphim sepia on the dirt piles. Um, also upgrade to the, the handle. Otherwise, I'm going to 
just destroy that pike. Uh, I don't know. Not sure. I want it to have a little bit more of a rough feel to it. Uh, I don't think that the Agrax and the Seraphim CPA are doing it. Um, might be like a Null Noil kind of a thing. Okay. Um, I don't know. It, it could work out. Nah. <laughs> Alright. Let's let that sit. Maybe we'll hit it with some Null Noil and then come back with Seraphim CPA. Okay. So I'm kind of afraid that I'm hitting it too much with Wash. Um, and it's just going to turn into a, a mess. So I think what I'm going to do instead of just straight up hitting it with wash is uh, kind of go around the base of these piles. Um, that way, oops, uh, that way we have some highlights towards the top. I think that I think that'll work out. And this is no oil, isn't it? Yep, cool. Okay, I'm using the right one. Thought for a second it might have been Agrax or Shade. Um, okay, looks like it got a little sloppy. That's okay. It's the sewer. Land of the sloppy. Um, yeah, okay. I think it's turning out nicely. All right, I'm just going to go around the edge like I do. There we go. Um, you know, this isn't looking too refined up in there, so I'm just going to do the underside of this, uh, um, what you call it, a little tunnel? It's probably the mouth of a tunnel. Okay, I'll do the other side. I'm not going to do the whole underside, just more, so, uh, more of the, uh, more there. Leave the, okay, maybe I'll just hit some of that. There we go. Yeah, dude, this is gonna look good. I'm really happy with it so far. All right, um, I'm thinking that the next step is going to be to hit it with some textures. Um, then we'll get a little bit of scratches and stuff. Uh, and then it's a little micro texturing. And then maybe we'll do some pigments to it. Then I'm gonna seal it and then we'll move on to uh, the dude himself. All right, so let's go ahead and Get, let's see, what are we going to use? Um, there is, ah, here it is, Slanishi Gray. And then we're also going to need a really fine brush. Okay. So, we got the, uh, the Windsor Newton Series 7. Uh, it's a triple lot. Um, pretty happy with this brush. I probably wouldn't buy too many Windsor Newtons, uh, just because they are pretty expensive. But this one, I don't know. I, I, I think this, for, for the for what I'm doing with it, it's really nice. So we're kind of, remember when I said don't do edge highlights? Um, so here is kind of the exception. I'm going to do, I'm doing edge highlights, but I'm not. So what I'm trying to do instead, um, the same principle. So we are trying to define the edges, but instead of just doing a, a, like that Tron line I was telling you about, I want, it, I want it to be kind of a mess. Like, I don't want it to be uh, nice, even lines. And um, I want it to be like it scrapes. And so we're kind of, kind of jiggling our brush just a little bit as we go along the side. And then maybe every once in a while, We'll jiggle it, and then we'll kind of pull in a little bit. So it's, and then like it's a like a slash against the brick. Um, and I think this is this is a technique that it's gonna take some practice. Like it's it kind of took me a little bit uh, to kind of get it to where. It didn't just look like it was a big glob or 
too premeditated or something. And you don't want to be consistent. Um, because then it looks premeditated. And I just remembered that there was something else I wanted to do to it, too, that I've kind of been working on. I got this uh, technique that I'm trying to figure, trying to get dialed in. Um, I was working on the base of uh, Ian Hale. He's um, like this uh, event exclusive custode um, shield captain. And he's really cool. Um, but he has this like broken up diocese, like this marble stair thing that he's work that he's kind of like walking down and um i my my custodes well, like all my imperium like they're walking through uh they're they're kind of walking through a forest and uh for the longest time i figured i'd just kind of um I was just going to have them like standing on rocks. I was going to replace the, the marble, um, stairs, but I decided against that. Um, instead went with kind of like a nature reclaiming, um, antiquity feel to it and started looking up how to do, um, how to do rotting, rotting marble. The marble starts to like the I think, maybe it's the marble maybe it's more. I think it, maybe it's kind of like comes apart a little bit like as as you get like acid rain and all this like sediment like uh, tearing into it a little bit. Um. So I've been working on that and I think it looks really good. So maybe that's what we'll do with this is. It's really easy. It's a really super easy technique. It does mean a little bit of glazing in kind of in prep for it. And actually, we could start doing some lines right there just to kind of start working on that. Cause you get this, like a lot of the gypsum in the concrete starts to run a little bit. So maybe that's what we'll do. Let's get some of these lines kind of going uh, vertically, kind of a downward angle. Oops, got a little crazy with that one. So just gonna trash it up a little bit. There we go. Let's go back and hit some of these with some some verticals. There we go. Dude, I'm really liking this. I think like one of the things with these uh, horizontals, I'm sorry, verticals, you have to be like really quick about it or else you end up with these uh, kind of like squiggly lines. So it's like, yeah, just kind of make a few strokes and then <laughs> I just jump right into that one. Undermine exactly what I said I was gonna do, but that was an accident. This is looking amazing. Uh, we're almost done. Uh, sad thing is the next step is going to cover up some of this detail. So we put in all this hard work just to make it subtle. But it's in the details, right? And once again, this is a showpiece, so it's, you know, you're, you're, it's going to be worth it. Thankfully, there's a lot less rock work on the other Skaven.
Cool. Almost there. There's one. Yeah, this little guy right here. Gotta fix this bastard up. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Sweet. Alright. Uh, let's reconnoiter. I should really just like not tell you what the steps are ahead of time. Because <laughs> I'm going to end up changing them. Uh, think of something else. and I guess it's... So here's... Okay, so something I'm doing real quick. And I might not even need to do this. But I'm basically taking a little bit of Agrax Earthshade. And I'm using it as a glaze instead of a wash. To put it on top of the, uh, the structure. Um, so what I'm kind of doing is you ever if you ever seen um like old um you know like like uh older um concrete work or brick work or uh well I guess just rock work in general um like in a lot of your parks or uh public areas or old buildings and stuff um a lot of times you get this like uh you know there's like a little bit of a fungus um or maybe like a little bit of tarnish that ends up happening. So I'm kind of doing that. I'm just gonna kind of muddy the top. Once again, it's not as a, a wash, it's a glaze. Um, so we just wanna be really light with this. Like there's not a whole lot of glaze on my brush as I do this. And the nice thing about it is it dries really fast. Um, oops, uh, in some cases not fast enough. We're not doing all of it. So, yeah, there we go. I might not do the bottom so much. I think it's just gonna be mostly the top of this guy. We'll just assume that people walk, uh, or <laughs> scave and walk um, on the other bricks more often, and so it's worn away. So there we go. Um, then, what we're gonna do is um, take a little bit of this linen white, and I'm gonna get a smaller brush, not quite that uh, Windsor Newton. Um, let's see, okay. Uh, all right, here's this GW brush. Citadel. So I'm just doing a little dollop of linen white on my uh, my very old uh, Games Workshop um, paint station. That's what this is. This thing is mad crazy old, like everything in my life. Um, okay, and then now that I have this watered down, and it's almost a three or two parts water to one part. Oops, actually, it's not. It's more like one to one right now. Um, but I want it to be about two parts, two parts water, uh, one part paint, and. Then we're kind of going to go through here and just make little dollops. And this is, it's kind of like um, lichen, maybe a little bit. A uh, little bit of fungus, a little mold, you know, like, like what you end up seeing, like the, the, there's a, some sort of bacteria that ends up growing on a, the gypsum and the concrete and Old stonework. What do I use in that? I think it's old concrete uses, uh, is it lime? I want to say there's a little bit of lime in there. I think it probably ends up being a nice fertilizer for some, for some bacterias. Hmm. I think I might have got too crazy with it. A little crazy with it but you know the nice thing is, is by the time you get around it's dried so and I think that it's looking a little severe right now but by the time we get to the pigment it should be we can push it back just a little bit and you get this like raccooning which is pretty realistic um, where the outer side becomes a little bit lighter than the inside I think they're like little blooms. So we'll just kind of layer it so it's multiple, multiple 
Well, multiple layers. <laughs> okay, so let that, let that uh, relax. Then pigment and see where we're at. So a moment ago, I said that I wasn't going to tell you what I was going to do ahead of time <laughs> because I ended up changing it so much. Here I am changing it again. Um, so I think like after looking at the um, the the uh, the little molds um, a bit more, I think what I'm going to do is throw a little bit of this uh, Athonian camo shade, just a real light layer uh, over it. Just to, I want to just green it up just a little bit. And uh, once again, this is not a wash, this is a glaze. Um, I mean, so that, that, that means what that translates to is um, we're just going to be really light with it. Just put very little on our brush. Uh, we're just changing the, the hue ever so slightly. Um, yeah, that's the stuff. That's the stuff. Okay. I like where that's going now. All right. Cool. That's exactly where it needs to be. All right. Um, and you know what? I could actually be okay with it right there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally okay with it. Uh, the, where, uh, the, where that's at. So I think what we'll do is I'm going to clear coat this, um, and then we'll hop on him. All right. All right. So we're going to do kind of the under, um, what is it? Like a double brass, I the underside of his, uh, his cloak. So I'm going to start with some rock hearth, uh, flesh. And let's see, I think we're going to start with, I think it's going to be, I'm going to leave this red. Um, but we're going to do the underside of it, and then we're also going to do this guy right here. So try not to get onto that other piece of cloth. Okay. Then, uh, magic is going to be under here. I have to be very careful not to let it bleed on the opposite side of that cloak. You don't have to get a perfect coating on here. Um, because we're going to get in there with some glazes and kind of define the folds. <laughs> you know? I think this kind of would have been easier to do in pieces. All right, almost there. All right, so you get the inside of this piece of cloth. Okay. Yeah, there we go. I think that's looking good. I'm going to touch up just here because I think the, the light's going to hit it. So it ought to be smooth. Uh, oh, looks like I didn't get quite get that little spot in the back. Yeah, dude, this would have been so much easier had I done it in pieces. How about underneath the sh or above the shoulder? Yeah, that'll be cool. It's gonna be the details, you know. To really kind of sell this thing to to the viewer. There we go. Okay, so, oh, got a little piece right there, and that should do it. 
And it's kind of obnoxious because it doesn't seem like we have a defined edge of cloth here. So perhaps that was my bad for assuming that it was going to be a little bit easier than it is. Um, and it looks like actually this part right here is part of his uh, dress gown. So let's hit this. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah, we're good. I'm not feeling so confident in that now. Shit, I'm not feeling confident in that at all. Okay, hold on. Let's clean this up. <clears throat> you know, while we're at it, let's go ahead and hit some uh, Screaming Skull. And give this a shake. Uh, and then do some of the stitches on the cloak. That way when we uh, hook up some uh, a little bit of wash and glaze, it should just do it all at once. spots all right I think that's good all right I got this linen white we're gonna do the bandages on the uh, the pull arm Now let's get the shaft of his uh, pole arm, uh, and then we'll start with the Mechanica Standard Gray. Ugh. Oh, it's a big, gross gray booger. Oh. The reason I'm kind of going with the gray is I want it to be, I don't, I don't want it to look like a nice new wood, so this is going to be weathered and uh, it's just gray. That's what happens. And we'll put some uh, glazes on it to change the colors just a little bit. Alright, I'm having a hard time seeing with this light. Get a little bit on the bandages. It's probably going to end up with a little bit of brown on it anyway from the wash. Okay. So we're going to leave this pot open. And we're quickly going to break out um, Slanish Gray. Uh, and let's leave it right there. And we're going to do a quick wet blend. Oops. Stay open. Um, okay, so we're going to put a fresh coat right here. And then quickly go over here. There we go. Wet coat. Quick wet blend. You know what? I think it needs to be a little bit more severe than this. Come on, you. There we go. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Same thing. Wet blend. Okay, here we are. Okay, 
That's good. Uh, let it chill. And I think we'll do the skin. Yeah, we'll do the skin and we'll do some washes. I didn't, did I show you any of that? <laughs> anyway, there's the wet blend. Yeah, all right. All right, so I just made a little puddle of um, the Screaming Skull and the uh, Rekarth Flesh. Um, <clears throat> I don't have a robust uh, a variety of GW um, colors, and uh, what I've noticed is like a lot of my flesh tones happen to be a little bit um, more tan, um, even when it comes to uh, a Reaper. So I think this will be good because it'll be kind of chalky. I mean, these are they live in the underhives or under or the sewers, um, so they're not going to have a whole lot of pigment to their skin. And but I still want something that's a little bit. I mean, we use Rackarth at one point on the, some cloth. <clears throat> I'm trying to get away from that. Sorry, I think I just swallowed something uh, backwards. So now this is kind of tedious. Um, so oh, okay, real quick. Um, I did, uh, so it, this is about two parts um, Screaming Skull to one part Rackarth. It still comes out really chalky. Um, so I, I think that's like the, the, the Rackarth is the dominant pigment, um, the dominant allele. Uh, so yeah, that, that's kind of it. And we're going to use, um, we're going to use some uh, washes to really solidify that. Oh, hey kitty. Um, so this is gonna be boring. It, it, I, I do want to get like a, a really consistent um, coverage on this. <clears throat> so it's gonna take a couple layers. Uh, so I'm gonna do this off camera and let you hit up the flesh um, on your own. All right. Okay, so we're gonna hit this guy with a couple different washes. We'll start off with sepia. Um, I think for some of the cloth, we'll get into some agrax. And then um, we'll probably in the, go back afterwards and hit the uh, some of the skin um, with a little bit of uh, uh, was a drocky violet, and that's just kind of the uh, give a little bit more of that like uh, uh, un <laughs> oh what would you call that I don't know just lack of melatonin <laughs> okay so let's let's go and hit uh, some of this lighter color. Actually, I don't really like it in that uh, cloth. So we're going to pull some of that out, leave some of it, but I think I went a little too heavy on it. So we'll go a little bit heavier on the skin and not so much on the cloth. And this is tanning it a little bit more than I would like to see it tanned, but uh, you know, once we get that violet in there, I'm sure it'll push it right back. Okay, look at that, uh, that bandage. And it looks like we're gonna have to clean that up later. That's okay. I have to do highlights on it anyway. All right, so is that all the skin? Looks like we're about there. Uh, we have a little bit of this to take care of. And let's see, we're gonna pull some of that out. There we go. Love it, just erases, whoop, gone. Let's do some of the inside of this cape. Oh, got his tail too. Go heavier on the tail. I'll just wipe away some of that right there. All right, almost there. Okay. Let's let that sit for a little bit and then we'll hit it with some Agrax. All right, let's get some Agrax in there. Uh, we're gonna mostly focus on the recesses. Actually, let's go ahead and hit the, uh, the handle real quick. And this we could be uh, pretty inaccurate. I'm just gonna slather it in there like a wash. Uh, now we can uh, get a more exact rush. Okay, you gotta be quick with it to pull that down. Start looking for the recesses in the shadows. Okay, 
there's this whole underside that I didn't really know what to do with, so we're just going to glob in a bunch of Agrax in there. Okay. So, oh, geez, he had fur. I didn't realize that. Okay, so we'll have to go back and touch up that fur a little bit. I'm just going to get it right in the super deep recesses. I'm being really, um, trying to be really judicious with this. Okay. I got these folds. I don't, I'm just going to glob it in there a little bit. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go back and hit some of these little... Uh, get the stitches. Okay. There we go. While I'm at it, I'm going to go for the underside of the bandages. Alright. Trying to enhance the shadow. There we go. Alright. Um, next thing, let's go and hit the... Um, Let's do that uh, drunk high violet. And let's see. Go with maybe the nose ish area out of the face. So I figured that would probably give me oh. Okay, okay, this is going a little a little heavy. Let's get some water on it and pull it back a little bit. There we go. Ah, stay open, you son of a turd blossom. The inside of the thigh, inside of the arm a little bit. Yeah, this is going on really a lot thicker than I was hoping. Um, so we'll pull it out with some water. Just get kind of like a basic hue in there. Okay. There we go. The underside of his other arm. I'm really bummed about that bottle. And let's look at the tail. Let's water this down just a little bit. So the underside of the arm. And there we go. Yeah, that'll, that just cools it down a little bit. All right, cool, let's let that sit. All right, so I don't really have a good, uh, go like, G-dub gold, so um, here's kind of like a slightly darker uh, gold, almost like a, oh, I don't know what you call it, not quite brassish, I don't know, it's just a little bit darker gold. Um, if, if I did it differently, I would like to have something that's a little bit, has like a more brownish consistency, or not consistency, a, uh, a hue. Um, but this is what I got. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this uh, this gold and we're gonna apply it to a lot of the uh, um, a lot of the plates, and then we're going to um, put a little bit of Agrax on them. Uh, maybe a little bit of a uh, maybe what we'll do is do a slight blue glaze, and then we'll do a little bit of Agrax over that. I think that should get the desired color I wanted. Um, and then of course we'll go in and, and texture it with some goldish silver, maybe something like, I don't know if we'll do relictor. We might add a little bit of silver to the relictor like we have been doing. Um, not for this guy, but for other, for the custodes, if, you, if you're familiar with the custode videos, we did that. Um, and that'll kind of push the gold back a little bit. Because uh, it's not quite what we're after.
Okay, um, I uh, did put a bunch of gold on the blade. You might be wondering why the hell I did that. We're going to go back over it with a bunch of uh, silver. Uh, and yeah, so that's kind of why. So let's let this chill for a second and we'll figure out the next step. Oh, I just found two little spots I missed. All right, I'm going to hit that. All right, so how about we start with um, a little bit of Agrax. I want to be really light with this. Uh, and then we'll throw on some glimmin' blue. There we go. Looks like I missed a couple spots of gold there. <laughs> I recall saying that I was going to put it on light, and here I am, like, slathering it on the headpiece. So actually, instead of being light, what I think I might do is put on a couple layers of it. Let's throw a little bit there real quick. Just needs a little bit more. Okay. Back to what uh, the armor at hand. <clears throat> okay. Um, let's let this sit for a second. All right, so I got some uh, Gulliman Blue, and then uh, this is the last step in kind of rebronzing a non-bronze color. Um, had I just had bronze in the first place, that would have been the way to go, but make it up as you go. Um, I don't know what the dog is doing. I think he found, hopefully he found money and is bringing it to me. But it's probably not. It's probably my son's toys. There we go. Okay, I think that's it. All right, let's let it dry. So I got a little excited and completely forgot that this wasn't my test model. <laughs> I've been, uh, um, so what I'm doing is taking a little bit of Runefang silver and um, I'm kind of just dry brushing the edge a little bit. Um, just to, yeah, scuff it up a bit. Um, I'm going to go back in with more like of a directed rune fang um, instead of being you know, like that random dry brush kind of look. So we'll put like uh, more chippish chips on it a little bit. So that was it. Just hit it real quick with that. Um, now that that's done, uh, I'd like to go in. I'm going to shake this up a bit. feels a little bit watery still. Honestly, I've never really liked the Runefang Silver. Miserable Silver was my jam back in the day, but it is no more. All right, so I'm gonna kind of hit up the edges a little bit. And then we'll do some little micro textures. Little scratches. Yeah. 
gonna change my ISO real quick. I think I'm getting some sunlight filtering in here. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's a little bit better. Okay. Um, then just kind of go through and let's hit up some of these edges every once in a while. Oops. And I'm gonna do that off camera because it's gonna take a bit. And let's see if we can get good. Yeah, shoot, shoot. There you go, that's a good shot. Yeah, you got it. So I'll just do that and see what happens. Okay, lead belcher. Yeah, so let's hit up some of that chain metal. Okay, let's give that a minute. Okay, we do non oil. Is this non oil? There it is. All right. I'm just going to get the underside of his breastplate and some of the armor parts. A little extra shadow. Oops. That was missed a little bit. So I'm just going to wipe it through there. And this is it, right? Okay. Well, while I have this, um, I'm just going to dab a whole bunch in, in this area. It's gonna darken it because I really don't know what the heck I want to do with it. Okay, all right, I'll let that chill. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, get some of those bandages or those bands that he has around his uh, his arm. Uh, I'm gonna go for an itty bitty brush. Get our uh, chaos black and our uh, mechanicum standard. Okay, where are we at? Okay, there we are. So uh, this is going to be um, a little bit more of that quick uh, wet blend going on. Sometimes I really like the painting handles and sometimes they are in the way. Uh, and this is one of those instances where like, I keep going, flipping it upside down, back and forth and everything else and like if there were a handle wouldn't really help too much so um one guy i was talking to well this uh uh justin from secret weapon miniatures is an amazing artist by the way um if you see his work he's won many like a bunch of crystal brushes and a lot of other like really uh, high profile painting competitions um and but when he's uh when he's doing his he does all he does is rust for the most part like he you know old trucks old cars like old barn finds um amazing stuff and like if if rust isn't your thing that's fine but yeah i mean i think you have to you know you, you gotta respect game <laughs> you know um anyway uh when he's when he's painting he says that he often will uh like one of his his master pieces he'll probably clear coat it like four times in the course of a painting uh, or in it before it's done um and so you just kind of like go paint clear coat oops sorry about that so so there's lots of different ways like i mean for, in this case 
you know, we had already clear coated the, the model once. So it's not a big deal. You know, so the, the I think the handle isn't really protecting it from a whole lot. Let's get underneath there. Yeah, that's looking good. It's looking really good. Okay. Now we're going to get these eyes. Rats have, unless they're... Uh, Albino, which is your typical lab rat. Um, most rats are not albino, and so they typically have black ass eyes. So I'll just do that. I'm not gonna put it. I mean, I'll do like a, a little dollop for the shine, but I'm not gonna do anything special for their eyes. Ah. This is all garbly gook. I think I'm gonna mess with it a little bit. And then their nose. This I will do a little bit of wet blending. Cause it's not. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna mess with that eye. I'm not too happy with it. Um, I'm having a hard time doing the video and figuring out where the heck the lines are. So I'm gonna bust out a little bit of linen white. And we're gonna hit this uh, wrong brush. Pick out some teeth and some claws. And I'm not actually gonna swipe the whole, uh, that whole chunk of tooth. I'm gonna try and leave a little partition in there. So it appears as though there's two teeth. I'll let it combine in the front. Okay. All right. Um see and then while we're at it let's go ahead and hit some areas up here just a couple highlights on that bandage Okay. Now, the teeth are probably out ready. So we can get some seraphim. All right, let that settle. So now that I have that typhus corrosion and that water, I'm gonna kind of put it just in some strategic areas. So kind of in the recesses and then I'm going to take the water to kind of feather it in. I don't like the harsh, harsh edges that the typhus corrosion tends to de uh, develop. So let's see if we can get this light. Okay. Stick it in that plate a little bit. And we'll add a little bit of water, kind of feather it back in. Run it down here a little bit. There we go. 
not hugely necessary. You could probably actually skip this step, but I like to have just a extra little grime in there. Okay, let that relax a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of the blood red and mix it with a bit of the uh, rock hearth. Um, my, my hope is that we come up with something that's not quite pink, but still lighter than uh, the blood red. Not oof, I think I might have taken too much. It is becoming pinkish, but still, it's not like brazenly pink. That's kind of nice. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more of this uh, blood red. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm actually on my palette, I'm not quite putting, uh, mixing the entire thing. Kind of leaving a darker and lighter portion. Now we're gonna do some little micro textures. Uh, I had a fart about it. Then up top, I use the lighter portion where it gets a little lighter. Oops. All right, I'm gonna just focus on the edges and just make some little slash marks. Add just a little bit more rack hearth. It seems like it's not quite light enough and my palette's drying. I'm just too lazy to get the wet palette out. Okay, I think that's good for now. Um, so let's let this sit for a second. Okay, so this one's gonna be kind of tough to illustrate because we're talking some massive micro texturing uh, and it's probably not even necessary, but let's see if I can get the, there we go. So we're gonna get your tiny itty bitty little brush and then we're gonna get just a little bit of black and like I put some splatters on here now we're just gonna put tiny dots. Oh shit, I probably wasn't showing you that. Okay, so you see there? Can you see it? Basically I'm finding parts where it got really splattered. And I'm just putting little black dots to simulate the shadows that the, the holes cast. And using those splatters as the light. There we go. Just a few of them. Okay, so we have one, I think we're on to about one more uh, painting stage. And then we're gonna go into, uh, you know what? Yeah, okay, that's right. So we're gonna do a little bit of the rack hearth and we're gonna do a little bit of the skull. Um, kind of, we're basically mixing that flesh shade that we had earlier. So it's kind of a two parts uh, skull to one part rack hearth. And then we're going to go into the flesh a little bit 
and we're going to pick out some highlights. And when I say highlights, we're not necessarily going for edge highlights, which you may be accustomed to. Uh, we're going for the actual highlights, like where would the, the light hit the, the hand if it was kind of coming down at it. We're going to feather this in just a little bit and try to blend it out. So with that eye, I think I remember telling you I was going to touch it up again. So all I really did was hit it with a little bit of null and oil, and it uh, reestablished the recesses nicely. I'm actually going to hit the foot pads a little bit more. And toe pads. Just kind of define them. Okay, I think he's about good. All right, so um, I think uh, we have one more stage. I'm really happy with the way this guy's turning out. Super happy. So I think the one more stage is to get a little bit of pigment. Let's see which we use. I think this uh, Sienna. Um, yeah, let's do Sienna. I think that'll look good against the um, against his current value. Um, oh shoot! So one th one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go with Sienna, and I'm actually gonna change it up just a little bit. And I go with this, uh, um, oh, this is a burnt sienna, um, a little bit darker. I think this will uh, look good in the against the lighter shades. Yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, let's get the the rim of the base. I'm gonna let you guys do that off camera. There we have it, the final product. Uh, I really like how this guy turned out. I especially like, you know, the fades in the cloak. Um, I'm really happy with that. You know, I, I love how the uh, um, the pigment actually added to the fade ultimately. Um, yeah, that, that really, really turns me on. Um, yeah, I didn't get around yet to hitting that, uh, the water with some Ard Coat. Um, but I'm really jazzed to see how that turns out. Um, but yeah, dude, um, I think this guy, you know, he's the centerpiece. Uh, it's Shade Spire, so most of your models are going to be centerpieces. I mean, five guys. <laughs> I think you can spend, like, a little bit of time and, like, crank out five really good-looking guys, especially if you're going to play with them continuously. You know, it's not like uh, a 40K army or an Age of Sigmar army where you just have a ton of dudes to crank out. Um, so this should be pretty attainable. Uh, spend a little bit of time, make them some centerpieces, and of course, like, you know, uh, what was his name? Spit, uh, Spitclaw, you know, his, um, he's the centerpiece of the centerpieces. So really, you know, like we put a lot of effort into this guy. You don't have to do all this with everybody else. Um, so kind of, you know, enjoy it. Um, you know, a lot of the other guys like just have brick bases. So, you know, half, like almost half, maybe 40% of the, the painting was that base. Yeah, dude, you could just you know, almost skip right over a lot of that. So um, I'm really stoked with this guy. I'm really, really happy. So I hope you guys have the same success um, or at least uh, uh, get your groove on and, and feel the feel the paint. So stay with us, you know, as the Shade Spire stuff comes out, I'll try to do some more videos. Uh, I do have a skeleton one that I started <laughs> and then my hard drive crashed, as you've probably heard me say a lot. Um, you know, as other war bands come out, I'll try to hit them. So. Stick with us.